thank you all for joining us. I know that's lunchtime, so thank you all like even more for spending this quality time here with us. So as Yvonne told you all, I'm Vitor Cora, and it will be my pleasure here to be accompanying you all in this next 30 minutes. So here you all can have my contacts. So any doubts, I uh, want to see this in my environment, I uh, want to spend more time knowing about uh, trans container strategy and do a new demo. We are here to, to help you all or just to take some beers and and get some, some time to talk. I'm always also good at it, so <laughs> I'm available to, to help you all. So let's start here with a little bit of a contextualization, okay? Because we are going to be speaking uh, a lot of these terms. So I want to have everyone on the same page. So the first term that you're probably going to hear and well, know for some time, virtual machines. So virtual machines is a type of virtualization that we have everything 100% segregated from the machine, the host machine that they are running. And one important point here, remember this, uh, virtual machines contain the operational system. Containers, that's our focus here. Containers is a light wave of virtualizations. So one pretty important point here, containers, they contain everything that the application needs to run except for the operational system, okay? So this is one of the main difference between VMs and containers. A cluster, well, a cluster is a set of containers. So not much to, to tell here, but important uh, word for you all to know. A pod is the machine that's hosting all these containers. Uh, container images. The image, it's what the container is going to run. So inside of it, you have all the codes, all the executables, everything that that container is going to run. Kubernetes, when we speak about Kubernetes, this is a buzzword nowadays. It's the orchestrator. It's what makes the containers run and your application run the way that you have uh, prepared it. Registries, this is an important word because a lot of people just got it wrong with repositories. Uh, the registries, are what storage the images, the images that we are going to run in our containers and the repositories are where we store the codes, okay? So this is a little difference, but pretty important when we are speaking about container security and the container lifecycle. Pipeline is a set of automated process. So imagine a pipeline as in a factory where you're going to place your code in the beginning and you're going to have a running application with all its feedbacks and all its guardrails among the way, okay? So for applications, code enter one way and we have an application getting in the other way. If we look for cars, we would be having the pieces and the metals and everything going one way and the build car. So pipeline, have this in mind. And CICD, is the abbreviation for continuous integration and continuous delivery. So when people say CICD, they tend to say the CICD pipeline or interchange both words. So now Yvonne, before we move for the last bit of contextualization, what do you think about we do some polling to see if people have paid attention? Sounds good, I'm watching it right now. Okay. Um, Should be able to see it now. Okay, I just took it off the screen for people don't try to, to pick it. Do you see the answers coming in live on your end, Vitor? Or I don't. Okay, so I can go ahead and end it. I think we've got some responses. All I right. need this one, but I couldn't vote. <laughs> there we go. So there the results are. We've got 100% on registry. Okay, so people are paying attention. This is good to know. For all we are in soon the morning. Okay, thank you, Yvonne. So now let's move on for a little bit of the contextualization of the, the strategy, how we see the container life cycle. And this will prepare you for all the, the demo part, the uh, hands-on that we are going to do. So when we start here, our process, so we always start in the code repository. Remember the buzzword that we were saying? So when we create a code, the code is going to be 
stored in this repository. And as of our strategy, we start to see uh, all the, the dependencies, all the libraries, everything that may be vulnerable since this moment. So this would be the first touch point that our strategy would be start to, to act. So after this moment, what will hap uh, happen next? Your pipeline would push if everything's okay, or if your guardrails permit, we're going to push this code and make it into an image. And we would go uh, and store it in the registry. So here, a little bit of animation. I just love to animate stuff. So we would be going for the, uh, the second step in our container strategy. That will be the image scanning. So what does the image scanning is going to do? The moment that this image is going to go to the registry, we are going to see all the vulnerabilities, malwares, the checklist, see if have any secrets in it. And this is going to feed our next decision step. So the image was already scanned. And now I have some, <laughs> angry, uh, some angry fingers here. So now we are going to use this input to decide if this image is going to pass or not, if it's going to be blocked depending on our guardrails or not, if it's going to go to our production. And we finally go to our runtime. And in our runtime, we are going to have here two layers of protection. So here we're speaking about the fourth and the fifth moments of our container uh, strategy. So now we are going to have runtime protection for the container itself and for the application. This is pretty important to, for us to, to differentiate because when we are speaking about the protection for the container, we are speaking about code being run inside this container. This doesn't have anything to do with the application itself. And with application security, the application runtime protection, we are speaking about the codes that are being applied to that application. So attacks directed to your application, to your website, to your e-commerce, OK? So let's go now for the part that you all wish it to see. Let's go for hands-on. Let me share here screen two. OK. So first of all, I'm going to be bringing here my Visual Studio. And here, you're going to see first my code. So this is the code that I have pushed to, to my Git. It's a DV double way. So pretty straightforward and extremely vulnerable uh, application. So this year, I pushed to my Git. And our first touch point, it's here in open source security. So let's open it for you all to be able to see it here. You're going to see that I have like tons of, of repos here. So let me just find it here. Give it away. And you're going to see here that our analysis, so all our dependencies are going to bring you all your first findings. So this is the first moment that we start protecting your environment. We bring you this knowledge. We are bringing you uh, this in the code. This haven't been uh, transformed in an image. I'm not going to elongate this uh, much longer here in the uh, composition analysis part because we know that we are going to have a separate uh, installment just to, to look at it. But I wanted to bring you all this because this is where our container strategy begins. So it's not even shift left, we'd call it start left because this is the first touch point that your code have in your pipeline, okay? So after it, we would be pushing the image to the, uh, to the registry. And this is where our container uh, image scanning would be running. So let me just go back here one screen and start to show you now in container security. I have pre-pushed the, the image just because this may take more time or less time than, than prepared. We all know how this, this goes and we have 
short period of time here to, for me to don't eat all your questioning time and Yvonne will, will kill me if I did it. So I have pre-pushed the image. I'm going to show you here my container integration. This is the part where everything that's happening in my scanner get passed to container security, where we feed the information that we are going to use to create our policy, okay? So here, I'm going to enter in my registries and here in AWS ECR North Virginia, we are going to find that image. So we have here the V double way, okay? As I have told you all, I have preloaded it and you're going to see here even one trans layer. People always told me like, I'm happy to see that we don't have any vulnerabilities in this layer. <laughs> They're always our security layer, right? But here you can see like we have one content finding. You can enter here and see what we have found in it. So we have here a private key. This is something pretty great for, for you to have in mind and to build your policy because it's hard coded. Someone can just go in there and retrieve this kind of keys and that's unacceptable. And here you can do some filtering to see your vulnerability. So here I can see all the 36 critical vulnerabilities that I have in this image. I can go back and just analyze my high and higher vulnerabilities. This is something pretty neat for you all to have in mind. But this as a standalone won't do anything right now. So let's go back here to our container security and show you our third step. So here is where you're going to build your policy, where you're going to decide if it's going to pass or not. To show you all how this works, I have prepared two policies, one that's going to be critical pass. So those, what does this mean? If this image have a critical or higher, well, there's no higher than critical, but have a critical or higher vulnerability, we are only going to log it. You can see it here, okay? In this case, higher or, or higher. And here I have a critical block or critical delete that I have created that will block everything that's high or higher. You can see here that's set to block. So how does this work and what would happen? So here, let's go back. I will be your Vitor pipeline for, for the day for all to be able to see step-by-step step things happen. So here, first of all, I'm going to log in to my here, my cluster that have the block policy. One thing that I think that may be interesting for you all to see, just for the time sake here, I have two production North Virginia and the VWA. In production North Virginia, I have critical deletes. In here, in the VWA, I have the pass rule, okay? Just for anyone to say that, I, that I'm cheating here. So here I'm going to log in. This is my production cluster, okay? So now let's just apply my DVWA. Here, let me show you all also. I'm going to use this uh, manifest here, Kubernetes manifest, and it's getting the same image that I have shown you all, okay? DVWA C1 AS latest. So let's try to run it. So you can see here that load balancer wasn't changed, but here we have an error from the server. So when it tried to create the VWA, here we have a denied on the hook, and here maximum severity is median. If we go back to container security, you are going to be able to see it that here in critical deletes, we cannot have anything that those severity is high or higher, okay? So it's pretty important for you all to note that it has been blocked and above it all, it's going to tell you what's happening. So you can have this in your own pipeline, this information for everyone else to know what's happening because it's really important to know why something didn't have passed. And now let me change for my 
other cluster. This one have the policy that will allow it to pass. And now I will do the same thing. You're going to see that this image here, the ECR V8 is basically the same. I have just changed it here some names. You can even run the same, in fact, from the same place. So here it have passed. So let's just see in container security what happened here. The events we are going to have here one block. So here from critical deletes, and here are the findings, the reason why it was not allowed to pass. And here we are going to have the critical pass. So the same information, the same critical vulnerabilities, but this time we only logged. Okay. So it's all up to you. You can choose what you're going to let it pass or not. This is what uh, we want to show you all in the admission control. So now we go for the runtime. So let's here, let's get here. Our pods. At pods. Okay, we have here a running pod. And I'm going now to just get this namespace here. And I'm going to do an kubectl exec in it, OK? The idea of it is that I'm going to get a bash in this container to show you what will happen. So I'm on it, OK? You can see here, roots, dividable way, pod 4. So now let's do an cd, bash 4. LS, LA. So let's see what we have here. OK, there is something here that it's pretty interesting. Log. OK, so let's do a CD log. And let's see what we have inside of here. We have the logs for this container. So we have here Apache 2. If the way is based on Apache. So why this is interesting? Here is our load set for runtime. So inside our load set for, uh, for runtime, we have prepared here, let me just here, see here, clear log activities. I have prepared this for isolate, let's choose terminate. If someone enters in my container and starts to just delete logs, I want this container to be gone. I could just isolate this, but terminate is a little bit more visual here to, to show you all. So let's do an rm apache to dot log. OK, so let's do a sudo. Apache to. Uh, OK, I'm looking for the wrong way here. <laughs> so let's pick here alternatives logs. I'm trying to remove something that doesn't didn't exist. So you can see here that we are out. The container was already terminated. So someone tried to start to remove logs here. Even if this log batch didn't exist, and in fact, the container security just got here and it's down. Someone, it's inside of it. We can go back here. And pretty soon, we are going to have this event here in runtime also. So here, terminate it, OK? So it didn't let me keep playing and trying to, to attack it. So this is one of the layers of security that was telling you all about runtime. So this is what happens when someone is inside your container and it's trying to destroy it from a thing, not from the application itself. So let's see here if the pod is already reconstructed. So we have a new pod here. Yeah, get service. Let's try to log into this application now through HHP and see how things would go for an application attack. So now admin, password. Okay, I have to do the setup. 
set up is done. Okay. I have chosen here to do, let's do a SQL injection because they are really visual. So here, you're going to see that I have just done here a query to get all the users, okay? Admin users. Let's go here and change now for application security. You're all going to see that this group here, the VWA is under attack. So we have logged this attack that I have just done it. So let's just change it how we take care of it. I'm just reporting. Let's go for mitigate. So now let's just clear the screen and let's do the same thing again. And now I have it blocked. So this is what, what I have prepared for you all in a nutshell, all the five steps of our container strategy. We can go even further. We can uh, start to speak about the posture of the cloud itself, network protection to uh, some uh, new layers here, but I don't want to spoil the next demos or else Yvonne's going to be mad, uh, mad at me. Right, Yvonne? <laughs> okay, it's just a, a preview okay, okay. for the next ones. <laughs> I hope to have given you all a little taste of what you're going to see. Application security is going to be uh, show uh, in more depth in a future demo. So this year was just for you all to know how we do in the full life cycle and get you all excited for our next installment. Awesome. Thanks so much, Vitor, for a good uh, demo. We're going to open it up to some questions now. I only, I know we only have about five minutes left, but uh, we do have a couple questions to get us kicked off. Um, if you have any additional ones, make sure to keep leveraging the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen and just drop those questions in. Uh, but the first question that we have uh, is, is it possible to know if an image is being deployed uh, if an image that is being deployed is violating my baseline without stopping my pipeline. Yeah, that was the second use case that we showed for the mission control. You can choose if you only want to log it or if you want to block it. So this is possible. And you can even use this in the beginning for a PLC or for something like, I do just want to see if I have a low or medium vulnerabilities or I'm going to let anything that's, cre uh, that's vulnerable pass, but I'm not going to, uh, to pass anything that have malware as an instance. Thank you. And then I have another question here that says, kind of like a follow-up to the first one, with everything going on around uh, log4j, is it also possible to know if any of my running containers carries a zero day? Yeah, is it possible? We even have here in Cloud One uh, log4j uh, assessment tool. So you can use all our tools to assess log4j, and it's pretty neat, in fact. Cool. Thanks for that. So it looks like that's all the questions, which means you did a really good job at demonstrating a container. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. Um, we appreciate that you spent that time with us today. So we're going to go ahead and give you an Uber Eats gift card as a thank you for joining us today. So be on the lookout for that in your inbox. Uh, we hope that you were able to find some value in this content. And uh, if you'd like to get a bit more hands-on, you can take advantage of our free trial and free tier offerings of Cloud One, uh, where you'll have access to our open source visibility and monitoring cap capabilities. If you'd like to um, take, that a, take that out for a spin, check it out for yourself. Um, we offer 30 days free as well as some free tier options. And uh, I'll drop the link in the chat for that. But uh, that's all we had for you today. Hope that uh, you join us next month for our demo on securing modern applications with application security. Um, and yeah, we'll stay on a little bit longer if anybody has any last minute questions, but thanks for joining us.